she lives in Prior Lake. <laughs> and she's a project manager for C.H. Robinson. She and her husband have a little daughter, Roslyn. And then there's Molly and Dan. Dan was the great son-in-law that came here tonight. Molly is uh, the director of the SAC program in Wasika. And my five daughters would help me in many ways, whether it was working on bulletin boards, uh, critiquing resumes, and uh, helping me with that. Or in Jennifer's case, she was a mentor for me, um, for one of my students, rather. And um, as you look at my table, the one person that is probably the happiest that I retired is my son-in-law, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Dan nods his head. Uh, Dan works for MnDOT. And on those days when the roads were bad, I would call Dan and I'd say, okay, how's Highway 14 looking? And he'd say, Val, go to 511.org. <laughs> and, and you will know more than I do. <laughs> Even this year, with me being retired once in a while just to get it going, I would call Dan and I would say, How's Highway 14 looking at? So, um, anyway, thank you, Dan, for helping me out with that or not. But, anyway, uh, as I look around the room and as I, I was looking at everyone tonight, I thought, There are so many people here that have supported me over my 23 years at Oatana High School. And um, I don't want to mention all of them because I know I would leave somebody out. But as I look at you, they were people that supported me with YSL, with Life Work Prep, and with mentorships, and with just teaching and teaching in general. And so thank you so much. But there were three that I picked and asked to sit at my table. And the first one was Mr. Herzog. Um, Mr. Herzak, first of all, he hired me, so I would, I would be here tonight if it wasn't for him. But secondly, his enthusiasm and his love for Oatana High School was just contagious. And as I came to work under his guidance, I came to love that school so much myself. And so I thank you for that, Mr. Herzog. Your love and your energy just inspired so many of us that worked for you. But the other thing about Mr. Herzog was something that I learned throughout observing him. He would be out in the hallways. He was always out in the hallways. And he would be stopping to talk to kids. And you know his stance, those of you that worked with him. He would kind of stand and he'd look them in the eye and he would talk to them, whether it was about a behavior or it was about an achievement or if they just happened to be walking by him when he was out in the hallway, he would look them in the eye and he would talk to them. And as they walked away, they knew that he believed in them and he valued them. And that was something I wanted to bring into my classroom. And I tried to do it in a small way, but thank you, Mr. Herzog, for being a role model for me and a mentor for me. I so appreciate it. The second person I asked to be at my table tonight is not here. And that is because she called me yesterday and she said she was in the hospital. And that is Vivian Rubidor. Now, if you know Vivian, um, well, I went to visit her today and I asked her if I could share a little bit about her. Vivian is 89 years old, and she has been a widow, widow for 17 years. She is the mother of eight children, and she has been the foster parent of 48 teenagers. Yeah, She was so disappointed she couldn't be here tonight. You might know one of her daughters, her daughter, Bernie Jensen. But, um, for eight years, Vivian came into options, and she volunteered as a grandparent for education. And she would walk around the different tables, and she would talk to the students. She might tell them, I don't think you're supposed to be in that website right now. <laughs> and she would gently bring them back to be focused. But the most important thing Vivian did is she listened. And so many of us learned so much from her 
in the fact that she was so willing to give up herself to, to be there for others. Um, the robotics team this year had the kind of the saying, what you give is what you get. And I think Vivian was the epitome of that. And so I thank her for those eight years that she was with me. She was really my right-hand person. Um, one thing about Vivian, she would be there almost every day. You think about it, eight years volunteering, almost every day, but once in a while when she wasn't feeling good, I would get a phone call in the morning, and she would say, will you excuse me today? <laughs> and she'd say, just dock my day. <laughs> but the last person that I asked to be at my table, and I'm so honored that he came tonight, is Jared Newhart. He told me he drove two hours tonight from Maple Grove to, to get here. He works for the Boston Scientific now as a mechanical engineer in the R&D. But Jared was a student. He, to me, he kind of stands for those students that we have, that they walk into the room and they just challenge us to work harder, to be a better teacher. And, and that's what Jared did for me. When he came into options eight, nine years ago, I could see that he had a passion for learning. Whether it was with an inquiry where he was going to build a, a wind tunnel, and quite honestly, Jared, I had to go home and look it up and see what is a wind tunnel. But that's what he and, and Carlos Alba and Jeremy Zimmerman wanted to do. Or if it was a mentorship uh, in engineering, or if it was starting a robotics team. And Jared, so many students owe so much to you for having that energy and that willingness to put the work in to getting a robotics team started at Otama High School. His enthusiasm for learning just enthused me. I'll tell you a story about Jared. Uh, we would usually connect after he graduated when the new robotics challenge came out. And one year, um, probably about three years ago, four years ago, I, I sent a text to Jared and I said, so what do you think about the new challenge? And I didn't hear back from him, and I thought, okay, well, that's okay. Um, Sunday afternoon, I got a text message, and he said, uh, are you talking about my challenge, Mrs. Rose? And I didn't know what he was talking about, so I, I asked him, you know, I, well, I was talking about the robotics challenge, but what are you talking about? He was in Africa. He was working with engineers without borders, and he was working in a village there. And wasn't that cool? I got a text message from Africa. <laughs> that, was, that was really neat. So thank you so much, Jared, for making the trip down here to sit at a table of a former teacher that you had who is celebrating her retirement. I just, I just really appreciate it. I have a quote that I want to share with you, and it was actually in a basket from one of the silent auctions a few years back, but I think it really speaks to uh, what we do and why we do it. It's called teaching. Teaching offers something. It offers love. Not only the love of learning and of books and ideas, but also the love that a teacher feels for that rare student who walks into a teacher's life and begins to breathe. I teach because in being around other people who are beginning to breathe, I occasionally find myself catching my breath with them. Thank you, Owatonna Public Schools. It's been a wonderful 23 years.